Hi, and welcome to this PowerPoint presentation on artificial insemination for canary and finch breeders. My name is Andrea Kabibi, and I'm a zoo professional. I've been working in zoos for over 33 years in Canada, United States, and uh, Great Britain. Um, I've specialized in the breeding and release of endangered species, and for the past eight years, I've been animal care manager at the bird department uh, at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. I have received uh, specialized training for artificial insemination in birds at the National Zoo um, in Washington, D.C., and uh, I also set up the uh, artificial insemination program for cranes at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Now, I happen to be a canary breeder and a finch breeder at home. I have over 170 birds, and I decided to uh, bring artificial insemination into my bird room and uh, specialize in the artificial insemination of the very small birds. Now, in the zoos, we mainly dealt with large birds like cranes, and these birds are a lot easier to collect a sample and inseminate a hen um, due to the uh, larger size of the semen samples. One of the challenges with the very small birds, which is why so very few people have been successful with artificial insemination in small birds, is the fact that the uh, semen sample from the male is very tiny. It's uh, 0 0.01 of a milliliter, and it dehydrates almost instantly in the pipette or the insemination tube as you pull out the uh, sperm sample. So this has been one of the challenges that I've aimed to overcome for the past couple of years by um, practicing artificial insemination in my bird room. And I have been very successful. I've uh, had 95% fertility rate, my Norwich canaries and my other birds, and um, the artificial insemination has worked extremely well for me. So I've put together an artificial insemination kit so that I can share this expertise with other bird keepers, which I will be telling you more about in this presentation. But first, I'd like to start with a bit of information about the reproductive system of canaries and finches. Uh, here you can see a canary hen. Uh, the finch hen is exactly the same. Now I've drawn it, um, I've enlarged the reproductive tract there. It doesn't actually stretch quite so far up the bird, um, but just so that you can see uh, various details of the hen's reproductive tract. Now some of these details are very important when it comes to successful artificial insemination in these birds. One of them is that, uh, first of all, the yolks uh, start out in the ovary at the very top right hand uh, part of the bird. There you can see the ovary. And the yolks enter an area called the funnel, and this is the top of the uterus of the bird. And when they're in the funnel, this is the only time they can actually be fertilized by the sperm. Uh, this is very important because they can only, they're only actually in there for 15 minutes. Then they move on to the magnum, which is where the shell membranes are added, and they're there for three hours. However, at this point, it can no longer be fertilized. Um, they move on then to the isthmus, and that is where the um, albumin or the egg white is added, and they're in there for approximately one hour. After that, they progress to the shell gland, um, which you can see at the bottom of the uterus there. And the shell gland is where shell material and pigment color is added, and that takes approximately 21 hours. So the total from start to finish, when the uh, egg yolk first enters the funnel at the top of the reproductive tract to when it's actually laid, um, then it takes 24 hours, which as we know, this is generally how long it takes for our canary hens um, or our finch hens to uh, cycle through one egg. So um, most important thing to note though is that that 15 minutes when the yolk enters the uh, top of the funnel is most important to have, make sure that there is sperm in her system so that it can be fertilized as it drops down. Interesting fact about birds is uh, the hens have what's called sperm storage tubules. And this is located at the far end, the bottom end of the reproductive tract. And it's actually just after the shell gland or um, just after the cloaca, but before the shell gland. And the canary hen or finch hen is able to store semen there 
For canaries, this can be up to 10 days, and for finches, it can be up to 13 days. So uh, one of the things we do with the protocol that I've set up, the procedure for when exactly to be inseminating your hens, it takes into account that first we want to fill the sperm storage tubules, and after that we want to try and catch each egg as it drops into the top of the funnel. So the um, schedule that I've got set aside in the book, which uh, accompanies the artificial insemination kit, um, does take this into account and ensures a maximum opportunity to fertilize all the eggs in the clutch. One thing to keep in mind, I say that uh, uh, the sperm storage tubules enable the bird to store sperm for up to 13 days in a finch. However, not all hens are alike and not all hens can do that. So you won't know whether your bird is actually able to store the maximum amount of sperm or whether they're not. And the other thing to keep in mind is the older the hen, the less time they can store sperm and very old hens can't store it at all. So again, the whole uh, insemination uh, schedule that I've set out takes it, it, this into account. Now we'll move on to the male canary. In the middle, you can see a diagram of the male canary's reproductive tract. Um, unlike mammals, birds have their testicles internally, as you can see just above the kidneys there. And there's two tubes, one running down from each testicle um, to the cloaca. And this is this. These are called the vas deferens, and these transport sperm from the testicles to the cloaca, where the bird can inseminate the hen. Now, if you look to the upper left corner, I've got a drawing there, and that is cloacal protuberance. It's called um, with canaries and finches. The males, as they come into breeding condition, um, get a swelling of the cloaca. Uh, in that area, and this is indicative that the bird is a male and it is in full breeding condition. Now, what actually causes a swelling, if you look to the right-hand side of the picture there, you can see a dissection view that I've drawn of the cloacal protuberance. Um, and the vas deferens, which is the tubes that, cl uh, that, that transport semen, uh, sperm from the testicles to the cloaca, they terminate at the end of the cloaca. And they swell at this point, and there are some loose pockets of skin that are called seminal sacs, and the bird can actually store sperm in these small uh, sacs within the cloacal protuberance. And all this is relevant to the method that we use to extract semen from the bird. Now, the artificial insemination kit that I've put together, um, I'm going to describe some of the uh, components of it. Uh, you can see scissors on the upper left there. These are used for trimming the bird's uh, vent area, trimming the feathers away. Uh, the, as I mentioned earlier, the male's um, semen sample is very small, at not uh, 0 0.01 of a milliliter and it's easily soaked up by just one feather. You, you can easily lose it. So um, the feathers around there need to be trimmed away. You can also trim the hen, but most hens that are in full breeding condition have what's called a brood patch, and they lose, lose the feathers around their abdomen and around their vent. So very often they're already bald down there or don't have any feathers, so you don't have to trim them. However, I have had a couple of Norwich hens that have been fairly, uh, f um, still fairly heavily feathered, so I have trimmed away there just to clear the area for artificial insemination. Um, in the uh, middle there to the right, you can see the insemination pipettes. Those are what we use to collect a sample from the male and also inseminate the hen, and I've specially modified the end to ensure that the hen does not get damaged in any way or, or harmed um, when she's being inseminated. The red bulb is used simply to um, squeeze, and, uh, squeeze out the sample when you're inseminating the hen. Um, important thing to note here is uh, these pipettes do not get inserted into the male canary at all or the male finch. I know there's some videos out there showing uh, some very short uh, pipettes with blunt ends um, being plunged in and out of canaries. And uh, please don't, don't do that to your birds. Uh, not only are you causing them a lot of pain, but you're also potentially uh, damaging their reproductive tract there. 
um, and you might maybe get a sample, but uh, you will damage your birds. So uh, the whole point of this kit is to be able to collect samples from your birds and not cause them any discomfort or pain and also uh, make sure that they stay healthy so you continue to breed from them for many years to come and, and you can do artificial insemination many times over again. Uh, so those are the insemination pipettes. Then I've got some wipes there, that's uh, some cotton uh, that I put in there, and that's just for wiping away any fecal, tish, uh, fe fecal material that might occur when you're either collecting from the male or inseminating the female. Um, I've used cotton because it's very soft, and keep in mind that the area down there is very delicate and it needs to be handled fairly carefully. So you can either use cotton or gauze uh, wipes or uh, Kleenex, but don't don't use something harsh or uh, like paper towels. Um, just be, be very gentle when you're uh, dealing with the birds. In the middle at the front, you can see the semen extender. Now this is a very important component of successful artificial insemination in the small birds. As I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the semen sample from the males, uh, not only is it very small, but it's fairly unique in that it contains hardly any fluid at all. And canary and finch sperm comes out in a um, almost a complete cluster of sperm with no le next to no fluid. So it dehydrates almost instantly as it gets uh, sucked into the pipette. So one of the important components is to be able to provide it with a moist environment so that you can keep it alive in order to get it to the hen and um, inseminate her. The semen extender is used um, every time you do the insemination. It also contains an antibiotic, gentamicin, and this protects the sperm from fecal bacteria, which is um, deadly to sperm. It kills sperm almost instantly. Um, it also provides a bit of protection for the hen, make sure she doesn't get any infection or anything. So there is an antibiotic also in the semen extender. Then on the left, you can see a couple of microscope slides and some cover slips for the microscope. And I provided these in case you decide you do want to invest in a microscope. I highly advise it, um, being able to see the samples that you're getting from the males not only helps you evaluate uh, the, how good they are as breeders, um, but also uh, you're able to, after you, uh, you've inseminated the hen, you're able to examine the residue that's left in the tube and um, see if you actually got a good sperm sample. And if you didn't, you can try again with the bird in half an hour, or if that doesn't work, then you can try another male and ensure that the egg coming down the tubes is going to be fertilized that day. Uh, and then you can also see in the middle on the left, there's an empty bottle there, a small dropper bottle. Um, this is for uh, the semen extender. The semen extender comes in a glass ampule and uh, it doesn't have an expiration date on it. So it will last as long as you need it to until you break it open. And then um, you need to dispense it into that small bottle on the left and put the little dropper on top. And that's what you use when you're collecting the a sample from the male. Um, it, should, it will last, it still has a very long expiration once you've opened the glass ampule and put it in the dropper bottle, um, but and it, it'll last more than a breeding season, so you still have a good long expiration date on it once it's opened. Um, the other component at the far uh, back at the right there is a disinfectant, and this is to ensure that not only do you keep your tubes, um, pipettes clean and free of bacteria or anything uh, damaging to the birds, but you also kill any sperm that's left over in there and uh, that'll ensure you don't accidentally inseminate um, one breed with another breed uh, because you didn't realize that there was sperm in there. You thought you'd flushed it out enough with water. So uh, the disinfectant is for that. It's for uh, disinfecting. But instructions for how to put the kit together and um, uh, what gets used for what is all in the book and also in the videos that are provided. 
Now here's uh, an excerpt from the book. This is showing an actual sperm that I've collected from that male Norwich. Now that's a sperm sample. That's the maximum amount you're going to get. Um, I didn't use semen extender on that because I wanted to show how small the sample really is and how fast it uh, dehydrates in there. If you get anything larger than that, then there's a good chance that it's actually lymph fluid uh, mixed with sperm. Now, I mentioned earlier that fecal bacteria is, um, kills sperm, lymph fluid also kills sperm. And a bird will produce lymph fluid when an area is being um, handled roughly or traumatized in some way. The body produces this fluid to protect it. Um, so if you do find yourself getting some very copious, um, very liquid and large liquid samples, then it does indicate you're being too rough with the bird. You're not, you may get some sperm in there, but it will be killed by that fluid. So uh, I think the moral of this story is be very, very gentle when you're collecting the sample. You don't want to get a lot of lymph fluid. You don't want to hurt your bird. You just want to get a sample and um, have the bird willing and able the next day to collect more from him. So uh, all of the directions on how to do that is in the book and in the videos. Now here I've provided a picture. This is um, some Norwich canary sperm uh, that I was examining under the microscope. This is from the residue left in the tube. So generally what I'll do is I'll take the sample from the male, I'll inseminate the female, and then I'll take an extra little drop of the semen extender into the tube and squirt it back out onto the microscope slide, put the cover slip on top, and have a look. And this will tell me whether the sample I just inseminated into the hen was a good effective one or whether there was even any sperm in it at all. So if this was a full sample, it would be absolutely teeming with uh, the sperm there. But because it's just a residue, it's just got a few, but enough for me to see that the sample was good. Now the sperm, you can see it has a big long tail on it and that's for the locomotion and then it has like a spiral at the top and that is the actual um, uh, DNA encoded cell that inseminates the egg. So um, I will go on here and this, I've done a nice big drawing so you can see what all the fuss is about. This is what canary sperm actually looks like. Uh, uh, different uh, species of birds actually have different, totally different looking sperm. So a parrot sperm looks completely different to canary sperm, which is unusual because most mammal sperm all looks the same. Anyway, you can see there an undulating membrane that's wrapped around the tail. This enables the uh, sperm to uh, travel in, and, and it gives it its spiral type of effect when you see it under the microscope. And at the top, you can see the nucleus, and this is what carries the DNA to the uh, yolk for, from the hen and fertilizes the egg. Now here's a uh, copy of my book, and that is included with the insemination kit. I filled it with illustrations and, and uh, photographs that cover every aspect of the artificial insemination in the small birds so that it's clear de clearly detailed for everyone. I've also got sections on disease control, making sure that you keep everything clean, um, and also about uh, contaminated or non-contaminated samples, depending whether they contain any feces or not and how to deal with that. Uh, I've got sections on a section on microscopes, uh, what I recommend as a microscope to buy if you want to examine the sperm samples and also what to look for in the samples and how to properly evaluate them. Now also I have videos available um, and these are on my website in the members only uh, section. So for those that want to uh, see the video as well as read the book, I've got some on getting started, on trimming the feathers, collecting the sperm. I've got two different videos of collecting the sperm from a male canary so that it's really clear on how you do it and then how to inseminate uh, a female a uh, hen, a canary hen. Down below, I've done the same again with uh, finches, trimming the feathers, collecting the sperm from the male, and inseminating the hen as well. And these are all available on the members-only area to anybody who's purchased a kit. So you'll be able to read the book and 
watch the videos so that you get a really clear idea what what is happening with everything. Now, one of the things, if you want to take uh, artificial insemination to the next generation and, and imagine um, the possibilities of freezing canary sperm. Now, I have been trained to freeze bird semen in liquid nitrogen, but it tends to be that with the larger birds and the larger samples, the fact that the canary and finch samples are so small is going to present a lot of uh, challenges that you don't have with the larger samples. So I do intend to be working with this for the next year or so and uh, perfecting the technique for freezing uh, canary and uh, finch semen. Now what I envision for the future is a possibility that uh, specialist bird clubs would maybe invest in some of this equipment. It's not as expensive as you might think, and receive the training on how to maintain it, maybe offer this as a service for a nominal fee per month uh, to the breeders, and they could, would be able to store the sperm of their prize canaries or their champion birds and either use the sperm later on if something happened to the bird or just store it for the next 10 years and come back to it in 10 years and and use the sperm then to uh, re-inseminate hens in the future. So there's many possibilities. Uh, the other one is that you'll be able to ship frozen sperm to other breeders across the country. Obviously, crash, crossing international borders is a little more difficult with a biological specimen like that, but certainly nationwide, it would provide breeders with far greater genetic diversity in their stock because they're not stuck with just what's available locally or um, somebody who owns the perfect specimen or the prize champion bird would be able to share the sperm with other breeders and maybe through a stud service or something. And uh, genetically, it would be it would provide much more diverse opportunities for the breeders. So I envision this in the future, and I will be working on this next. And this is natural follow-on from uh, artificial insemination. So uh, here's a picture of what I have available. This is the kit. This is the book that comes with it. As I mentioned earlier, I also have videos that will. Uh, are available on my members only section of my website. And you can reach that area at www.kabibiscanaries.com. My name is Andrea Kabibi, and my address, uh, email address is andy2010 at netzero.net. My phone number is 760-749-1434. I uh, really look forward to being able to share my expertise in artificial insemination with other breeders and hopefully help improve your breeding uh, season and get rid of some of those clear and infertile eggs that plague us all throughout the breeding season sometimes. So I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.